Hey there guys, welcome back, Ricky here. Yes, I did just get out of bed. Yes, I did not do my hair. And yes, I am wearing the clothes that I slept in. <laughs> it's one of those mornings where I didn't feel like coming out uh, and doing any sort of videos, but I just got something that I just need to talk about. And a lot of you guys have been asking me about my straps and asking me about the different materials. Um, so I figured I'd come out and put together you know, a 10 minute video explaining what the different materials are and uh, what I have got in the box that I am so excited about. So here are the leathers that I have. I have Latigo, which is your cowhide. And Latigo is great for just people who are getting into stropping and they're not really sure if you want to use compounds or not. Without compounds, Latigo still will work great. It's just a little bit slower. And with compounds, you can just really load them up with any compound level you want. You can go from 2,000, 3,000 grit all the way up to you know 100,000 grits if you want to. The only thing with Latigo is it tends to absorb a lot of the compounds, so you just have to be aware that it does absorb more compound over time and it's not very easy to clean. Your Buffalo is a very glossy version of the Latigo. It does have a slightly higher concentration of silicate, so it's really good for people who don't want to use compounds, but also for those who want to use compounds, the Buffalo is really easy to clean. The rolled buffalo is a dense, dense version of the buffalo. And the rolled buffalo is essentially the same as the buffalo in terms of its uh, silicate concentration. Uh, it doesn't have the higher gloss uh, finish that the buffalo has, but because it is really dense, it's really great for people who like to set micro buffaloes on their knives and then strop their knives afterwards. The last two are the equines. So you have the equine non-shell cordovan and then the equine shell cordovan. The equine non-shell cordovan is really just a you know, slightly matted version of the shell cordovan. The equine non-shell cordovan has the highest concentration of silicate of all the leathers out there, and it's really great to use with or without compounds. And for those who just want the extra gloss, the extra you know mirror finish on their knives or your straight razors, you would go to your shell cordovan. That's got the highest concentration of silicate, and because it has that special you know, membrane that's been pulled off, from the actual hide itself, it gives it that mirror polish that you're looking at. A number of my subscribers who actually are, they would consider themselves masters when it comes to you know, straight razor shaving. Uh, they said back in the 50s and the 60s, and maybe even before that, um, a lot of the barbers out there would actually have um, two skins. They actually would have a shell cordovan skin hide um, or strop sitting in the shop, and then they'll have a equine, you know, so a non-shell cordovan strop in the shop as well. Barbers back in the old days, they actually never used compounds. They went straight from the rough side of the equine to the smooth side, then to the shell cordovan. So that was a really interesting fact that I heard from one of my subscribers. If you actually are rubbing the backside of the equine versus the buffalo and the latigo, the equine is definitely much rougher. I'm, I'm thinking at least two to three times more coarse. Uh, it feels really interesting. It does have a grain. It feels a lot like a cat's tongue or even shark skin, if you guys have ever touched uh, shark skin, it feels like that. So it's like a one, a unidirectional sandpaper, if that makes any sense. Um, so very interesting stuff. I'm actually gonna start making my strops with the equine today. One of the last things that I really like about equine strops is that the leather, the consistency of the leather, it's much more even throughout the entire hide. When you buy a hide, you know whether it's three or four feet or three or four square foot of the buffalo or the latigo, you're gonna have splotches or areas that are not quite perfect the equine leathers tend to have a much smoother consistency from edge to edge. So there's a lot less waste that actually goes on them. And also if you were looking for that perfect piece of leather, you're more likely to find a perfect piece of leather on the equine than you are on a buffalo or a latigo. But that's mostly cosmetics. That's really not a performance issue at all. Again, if you're looking to load your straps and you're, and you're a beginner, go with the latigo. Don't buy any of the more expensive stuff unless you really know what you want and you really know what you're doing. And also, if you're buying a you know compound that only has a grit rating of three to four thousand, I would say bypass it altogether and just pick up a good strop. All of these straps here have enough silicate in them that they actually will clean your knife's edge fairly well after a stropping session. And so you don't really need compound. That's just my opinion, though. You can certainly go buy. Uh, you know, uh, compounds that you like. So currently I'm actually testing two compounds right now. These are both Herald's. Uh, this is the Herald's Green, which is about four to 6,000 grit. And this is the Herald's Red from six to 8,000 grit. Um, I really like these. I like the way the green feels better. It actually stays moist longer than the red. But the red, once you actually get it warmed up and it's actually moving, the polish that you get on the red is really nice. The green overall is a great starting compound. It's a compound that you can probably finish most of your knives on 
and it's something that actually works fairly fast as well. And so I'll leave a link in the video description for this compound. These are the new blocks that I made. They are a two and a half by 10 inch block and it seems to be a really perfect size block for those who are sharpening chef knives. Uh, and for those who actually like to sharpen sushi knives or those who have longer knives, uh, longer than 300 millimeters, um, consider a strop that is uh, 16 inch long. This is what I made. Um, I'm always making stuff for myself, guys, okay? Whenever I sharpen things or whenever I'm in the shop and I'm doing something that I feel like, hey, there isn't anything out there that can really kind of satisfy my needs in terms of, uh, you know, how to sharpen my knives better. One and a half inches by 16 inches long. They're really great for sushi knives and really great for yanagibas and uh, sujihikis and all those good stuff. Um, I'm enjoying them. I'll do a full session for you guys and show you how to use these. So anyways, guys, I will leave a link in the video description to all of these drops here. I have enough materials to make about 20 straps for the equine. And I have about uh, two dozen or so of the shell cordovan straps left. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I do read every one of them. Or if you leave a question on my Etsy store, I will also answer any questions that you guys send there. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for being here today. I will catch you in the next video.